Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. And my name's Rob. Um, this is my channel, The Stellar Man. And uh, today I'm going to talk about my new baby, the uh, Speedo Browmaster 20. Uh, and this is actually my fourth brew. I wanted to sort of uh, get used to using it first. And I've made a Chet Pills, um, a Pale Ale, an IPA. And uh, this is the Pills uh, and the Pale Ale. So um, I find those with gelatin, but I've been getting um, really nice clear wet off it, which is great. And you can see that at the end of the boil. Uh, you'll see later it looks good. Uh, today I'm making a Belgian double, which is one of my favourite styles. Uh, well, two of my favourite beers are West Marl and uh, uh, Double and the, the Chimay Red. Uh, the recipe is pretty much stolen off Stan Hieronymus' brew like a monk. The first thing to do before you start using Browmaster is to program in the recipe on the uh, computer controller. So one of the like, really cool things about the system is that you can pre-program recipes into it and it stores uh, 10 recipes I think. Basically each one you can set a uh, mashing schedule so you can have for your rails and stuff like that you can have pretty much mash straight at 63 degrees whatever you want to do. But um, I think where it's really strong is like for brewing lagers and stuff like that, more European styles, uh, you can go down and, so if I edit this one, you can go through and change all your temperatures um, and all your rest times and stuff like that. So there's like two inlets, at the, or an inlet and outlet at the bottom, uh, and the pump draws water in from one and pushes out the other, and the only other thing in there is a heating coil. Um, so it's super simple, it's basically just a, a pump and a heater. I'm up to temperature and the computer's telling me to put the malt in. So first thing we do is drop this tube on the inside that wasn't there before. And uh, there's a sort of metal post up the middle, which the other thing is quite useful for, it's got these notches. And the notches, that one at the top is at 25 litre and the one below it's 20 litre. So you don't need to uh, worry about volume, you just sort of fill it up to the notches. Um, but there's, there's um, four screens you have. You have two coarse ones and two fine meshes. So you drop the first set on the bottom uh, with the sort of flange thing facing up. And put that all the way to the bottom and make sure it's secure. And then you mash in and you put the malt in the middle and one thing that's really important is not to get anything on the outside because the more you can keep on the inside the clearer the wort is going to be at the end basically. So the majority of grains down the middle so then you drop basically the other way around, the fine mesh filter on first, on top of that, just like that, and then this sort of coarser one on the top with the, again, the metal piece facing up, and then you drop that on the top, a little nut here, and when that's all in, just go on the computer, so that is in, and I think it'll say start, yeah, filled in, and then up here it turns a pump in, so how it works is that it draws, the pump draws water from the outside through the bottom and pumps it in through the grain bed and it should start to spill over the top. So it first will be a bit cloudy, and I have a couple of bits in, you shouldn't have too many in, but we'll check back in a sec and uh, see it, if it's cleared up. Alright, so we're at the end of the mashing now, uh, 78 degrees, and um, I mean I think it creates really nice clear work, not that that's the be all and end all, but it's a nice bonus. Um, as you can see, it's still just sort of um, like cascading through the grain bed. So I'm just going to tell it that I'm finished there. And then, yeah, it'll say remove malt pipe.
Yeah, once the uh, once the malt pipes out, I'm sitting a bit wonky here for some reason. Uh, anyway, the the wort will start to drain through, and I'm just going to put a little bit of sparge water through the top of it. Just uh, I guess about three or four liters. What you can do now, actually, when you're sparging, is you can start the boil because the bottom of the malt pipe is above the uh, level of the work. So I'm just using a, uh, a low alpha acid uh, German hop in this brew, about 20 IBU total. And um, half at the beginning, half at the end. Okay, so we got 10 minutes of the boil left now. Just got another 30 grams of hops, half a protoflock tablet and a uh, half a kilo of uh, demerara sugar to go in. Okay, so we finished the boil, and now I think, sorry, my favourite thing about this system, we click through here, it'll tell us to cool it down. You know, actually, I've tried whirlpooling and it, I find it kind of hard to do it properly, so in a minute I'm going to put the immersion cooler in, um, but I'll just let it get, uh, accept this for now so we can get to a temperature. And uh, yeah, my favourite bit, cheers. Uh, so the temperature reading's here, so I'm going to put the cooler in and I will just monitor that. And it takes about 20 minutes to bring it down to uh, 20 degrees. Okay, so we're down to 22 degrees. I sort of finished cooling. I think I usually leave it a bit above what the reading says because it tends to be a bit lower. So we can check it with my surface thermometer. And yeah, it's about 20, just over 20 degrees, 21 degrees. Now I've just connected up to, with a bit of silicon hosing to uh, a brew bucket which I've cleaned out with PBW and just given it a bit of sanitizer at the end. Um, you have a lot of people moan about these uh, taps that come connected to the brew master. I've not had any problems. Um, yeah, let's see how we do. So here's the yeast starter that I made yesterday with a bit of uh, work from an IPA I was making. And again, that's the Shimé yeast. So I'm just going to ditch this straight in the top. And uh, we collected in the end pretty much exactly 20 litres. And that starter wasn't as vigorous as I'd have liked, but there we go. It's a bit cold at the moment. Um, and our final temperature see down here yeah it's just under 19 degrees which is pretty much what I wanted so I will whack the lid on the fermenter and uh, take a gravity sample next
Well, that's us pretty much done. Um, I think the whole brew day is give or take five or six hours start to finish, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, and yeah, I'm getting fairly reliable results out of the brow master now. Um, I've dialed in the brew house efficiency on the calculator about 80%. And uh, you know what, actually, I think what I'm really looking forward to is when I come and hopefully make some of these recipes again if they turn out to be any good. And I know exactly, just like press the button and hopefully I'll get a fairly consistent result. Um, I've still got some tweaks to make to the process, water for one. Um, but yeah, that gives us something to make another video for again in the future. Um, so yeah, I will... Um, post another video hopefully uh, if this turns out to be any good after fermentation and um, maybe we'll have a little poke around the kegerator as well uh, that was super easy to make but one something I've been wanting to do for a long time and I'm really really looking forward to having some draft Belgian beer on tap uh, hopefully in a few weeks um, I'm not sure it'll be very good for me but yeah that'll make me very happy um, anyway, yeah, I hope that was of some interest or help to you uh, if you're looking at getting a speed or brow master. And I can't recommend it highly enough. And also the brew bucket as well um, works really well when you pair the two systems together. The volumes match well and things like that. Um, yeah, so I hope that was of help. And see you next time.